Yeah, yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Paige, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm a student at Jesus College, and today I'm very excited to be interviewing the new master of the college, Sunita Elaine. Um, she's the 42nd master of the college and also the first female master since its foundation. So it'll be great to hear about all her plans for the role and just learn more about the role of the master in general. Um, so first, Anita, um, I'd like to know what's, what do you think is needed to become a college master and what sort of values do you think are needed for the role? That's a really, really good question, Paige. Um, it was one that I actually really thought about when I was thinking about um, applying for the role. And you kind of think to yourself, what is it that you're being asked to do? And in essence, you're being asked to join a community. A community made up of students, made up of fellows, made up of staff, made up of alumni. And I thought, well, it's a job which is asking me to care about that community. And I think that, um, in a way, throughout my, my career, I probably started mentoring when I was about 28. Um, I'm not sure if I was completely ready for it at 28 because I'm still kind of working out what was going on in my life. But I think it was the first time I started doing it. And subsequently I've done a lot of mentoring of, of people or done projects which are about helping people enable themselves and get the best out potential for themselves. And um, I really like that. I really like that as a, as a sort of something that's part of my life. So in a way I was thinking at this stage, it's great to be able to do that. And it does feel a little bit like it's Christmas because it's like this wonderful gift of, okay, I'm allowed to do that. Um, so how did you feel applying for a role that's been dominated by men in the past? I don't think I really thought about it. But maybe sometimes in life you kind of, um, there are these, these uh, ceilings uh, that women come up against, glass ceilings that women come up against, and you can see through them, but maybe we take a lot of stuff for granted. And I, I also sometimes I think as women, it's quite good to just focus on the job, focus on the thing that you want to do. Don't worry about the, the baggage that a, a, a position comes with. Just kind of say, is it something you're going to want to do? You know, are you 60% interested? Go along and have a conversation, go along and talk to them. Um, and then see how it goes from there. But I didn't think, oh, I'm making history or anything. I was just like, you know, I, I, am I going to be good at this role? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's nice to hear how it's all about being suited to the role rather than looking at who's done it before. Um, so you've spoken about improving access to Cambridge. Um, have you got any specific plans um, for the college for improving access? Anyway, we do, we do a really, really great job um, and we want to continue doing that job. But what we also want to do is make sure we get the messages out to people about applying, about um, how friendly a college is, um, inclusivity within the college. Um, also, the, the idea that you know you get the grades and you belong. Yeah. You know, I you know I like the idea that Cambridge Cambridge is what it is. It is a kind of bastion of excellence. Yeah. And I think that's fine. And that's really good. So if you get the grades, then you belong. But also I think there's other messages which we can get out to young people because I think that when I arrived, the understanding that actually at GCSE level, you need four or five A grades mm -hmm. in order to consider applying for Cambridge. And it kind of makes sense and you kind of think, well, actually that's because um, people are interested in different areas. If you're interested in, you're a fantastic at English and you want to apply for English and you've got a B in physics, I think for a lot of young people, they'll be like, oh no, I need to have like, you know, 10 A stars yeah. at GCSE before I even consider it. And actually for a lot of people who kind of grow and change between GCSE and A level, they commit more to their capacity and their potential for um, academic excellence and the path that it might weave for you in life. I think it's really important that that message gets out and no, don't discount us, don't discount yeah. us. You know, really think about the, you know, the choices that you have. I think that's the kind of level where we want to kind of keep more people in the pool yeah, who might be able yeah. to consider us. And what do you think you would say to someone who's a younger student who might think I might not fit in at Cambridge, like they might be from a widening participation background and feel like there's not so many people like them at the university, what would you say to them? I would say that they should do their background or research on other universities as well because actually it could be a similar picture at different universities they might want to go to. And I think that um, you have to kind of lean into life. You have to kind of go um, that uh, the things or the sorts of jobs and um, that you might want to go for, the careers, you might find a very similar picture yeah. wherever you're going. Yeah, 
Um, and so it shouldn't put you off, it shouldn't put you off because all I know is from the, the, my grouping of students I went through with, uh, we probably, and I had this when I was you know, going to university as well, you know, friends, peer groups saying, oh, why are you going there? You're from the east end of London. Um, but look at my life, look at the life of, uh, of uh, my friends who I met at university. They've, they've been able to really fulfill their potential and carve a really good life for themselves and make a difference in the world. Yeah. Um, so I think that um, you, you, sometimes you've got this kind of little thing in your ear saying, it's not for me, it's not for me, but go and see. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, go and visit. Yeah. Go and visit a college and see for yourself because yes, a lot of Cambridge colleges have got beautiful buildings and you kind of, which is lovely. You know, I think it is lovely. I mean, the Jesus is, is absolutely beautiful. The grounds are beautiful. The buildings are beautiful. The staff are really, really friendly. But it's the people that you should you should meet. And and also that idea that when you go 18, you start changing. You're an adult. You go out into the world. It's an adventure. I think go for it. Um, but you might not meet people who are exactly like you. But maybe that's the same for everyone who's going. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone is an individual who walks through the door and sits down for matriculation, which is the kind of, you know, the kind of normally a dinner where people admit you into the college. Yeah. But everyone sits there as an individual and there is no one in the room like them. Um, so I'd like to know now, who is your inspiration? Well, I think I'm going to give you a classic answer, Paige. It's got to be my mum. I think she's my inspiration because um, I'm very mindful of what she did in her life. You know, she, was, um, she came from Barbados, my dad, you know, they travel over 4,000 miles to come to this country to um, make a better life for their children. Right. And, and for a lot of, I think similar, I think to all parents as well, you see that better life being, um, being propelled or encapsulated in education. And they were very much talking about education all the time. But I think for my mum, she worked really, really hard. She was a nurse, she, uh, she did sewing as a seamstress. Uh, but she was always forever just telling me, I'd ask her a question and she'd say, oh, go and figure it out or use your common sense. Um, and I think those are a really good message to have from, a, from an early age. And I thought she was a really, really smart woman. She'd always be um, looking at things and working out how to figure them out. She wouldn't sometimes give me the answer, but tell me to go off and figure out the answer for myself. Yeah. So a lot of my viewers are in the younger generation. And so we'd all like to know, what did you want to be when you were younger? What, what did you dream of becoming? I, I, my dreams when I was younger, I was very interested in um, artificial intelligence. Uh, I, and it was the early, early kind of consumer time for computers. Right. Um, and I remember doing computer science, GCSE, uh, and finding it really, really exciting. And so I think I had that as an ambition. But I also, I think there was a mix of that and also at school, I was very into stories, and storytelling. I remember my English teacher at one point said, oh, you could be a promising writer. Mm -hmm. And that really struck with me. I think, I, I think that's why I ended up going into, into media mm -hmm. as well, because I think there was that kind of idea of stories and storytelling. And when I went to Cambridge, I, was, I did uh, go to do computer science. It was in the days when you could only do computer science in the last two years of your tripos. I know, you're like, what? Oh, <laughs> really? It has changed now. It's kind of like, oh, computers, that's, yeah, a, good, yeah. that's a good career. Um, and, um, but I did philosophy for the first uh, year. Okay. And I just really loved the subject and I stuck with it. Yeah. And so I think that um, I carried my childhood dream and interest in storytelling into my eventual career. Yeah, yeah. So what made you choose philosophy? Was it that passion for storytelling? Um, or did you just kind of find a love for it once you got to doing the degree? I, the, the philosophy for me came out of um, the interest in artificial intelligence. Right. Because you could only do computer science in the last two years in the tripos, I thought, well, I'll match it with something which is about uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, if I know about thinking and the human condition of thinking and how we think and philosophical logic, that might help yeah, in terms of means to an end. Means yeah, to an end. Right. yeah. I think when I when I got to do philosophy, I just really loved the subject. Oh, cool. <laughs> it felt like the first decision I really made. You know, I remember uh, the, you always have these memories that are milestones in your life. Yeah. And I remember um, in a phone box, 
yeah, it was the time when there were phone boxes. And um, calling my mum and dad and saying, I'm going to stick with philosophy, I'm not going to do computer science. And there must have been other decisions I'd made for myself, but I remember that being one of those milestone moments, which I'm sure, um, I mean, maybe you ha have had those, or uh, people, your, your viewers might have had those, where you kind of feel, I'm owning this decision now. Um, so what was the most important thing that you learnt whilst you were at university? The first thing I learnt was the, uh, my course, philosophy, was very much about analysis. It was very much about being able to kind of look at a lot of uh, factors and analyse and, and cut through to this is the key thing that counts. That, I think, helps me with uh, being an entrepreneur and going into business and kind of being able to kind of um, see problems as they came up and kind of go, okay, how do you, how do you weave through these? What's, what's the thing that really is the essence of the issue that you need to concentrate on? And the other thing was my sense of agency. I think I did so much at university that I just enjoyed. I had fabulous imposter moments. I was a jazz singer and I was like, okay, I've never done jazz singing before, but I'm going to give it a go. And I've only sang in my bathroom, but here I am on a stage. Um, I volunteered to join committees. I did, um, I was um, QC anti-racism officer. Yeah. All these things which I've not done before at school. And I just thought I'm going to have a go. So I think that sense of agency, that, that sense of, um, being in charge of your life, if you make, if you do something, it will make something happen. Yeah. I like the sense I got that um, activity made life more interesting. You've spoken a lot about throwing yourself into things um, whilst at university um, and getting involved, making these decisions to try new stuff and it is the perfect opportunity. Um, how would you advise that I find that balance between getting my studies done at university and trying all these new things, joining these societies? Well, I think, I think you're doing a really, you know, a good job of it. In ter just in terms of um, your, your subject's quite demanding. Mm -hmm. You're holding that down. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, holding it down, <laughs> organised, finding the time. Yeah. But just by putting yourself out there and um, regularly committing to doing your, doing your vlog, talking to people, talking about a university that you love, encouraging people to kind of say, yeah, come, you know, come and experience it for yourself. I think that's really, really good. Having had a lot of experience as an employer, going on from university and, and, and running the company and always looking for good people to work with, especially coming into the media, people who can show that they've, they've instigated something or started something or they know how a system works, uh, that's always really appealing. Uh, and really interesting. So I'd be really interested to hear what you've got planned for the college, what are you hoping to change in college whilst you're master? Well I think the, I think the important thing is to not kind of leap into change too quickly. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, it's a really really great college, really really well run. I think the things that I am interested in once I find out more and get to talk to people, uh, things I'm interested in are that idea of agency and making sure that students have a chance to explore their sense of agency and, and get launched into the world in a sense of agency. I'm interested in uh, health and well-being. I'm interested in uh, employability and careers and, um, and moving forward and having the capacity to move forward. I'm interested in making sure students know about um, different sectors, different job sectors, because there's no reason why you should. But actually, being able to engage with people who can come in and talk about what they do, I think is very good. I think at university level, obviously, there is a career service. Um, I'll want to find out how well that works with, with students at Jesus, how, how well they use it. Uh, do they use it at the right time or do they just start looking in, in year three? So those are some of the issues I think that um, I'm quite interested in. Okay, and that's all of the questions that I've got for today. So I just want to say thank you very much, Sunita, for taking the time to speak to me today. It's been so interesting hearing about all your past experiences and plans for the role as master. And I think it's just given me more of an insight into what the master actually does at the college. Oh, thank you, Paige. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've really, really enjoyed talking to you. So thank you for having me.